This is Saturday Agenda. Hello and welcome to Saturday Agenda. I'm Peter Van Onselen. Well, it's another big week and only one week to go in this campaign. We've got a whole plethora of polls out today, which I'll be talking to our panel about shortly. But first, we're joined out of Melbourne by Liberal Party frontbencher, Shadow Minister for Industry, Sophie Mirabella. Ms Mirabella, thanks very much for joining us. Good morning, Peter. Can I just start by asking you about a, a report on the front page of The Australian today, uh, suggesting that there's concerns in your ranks, uh, that your advertising campaign uh, and the organisation of the campaign generally has been a little bit too soft. We saw, uh, you wouldn't have seen this, but we saw... Uh, more attack ads by Labor in the ad break before we just came on now. Uh, do you agree with that sentiment, that, that, uh, that you're not muscling up strongly enough to the negative attack ads by Labor? Well, the Labor Party has only one thing to sell, and that's its desperation through negativity. And they will throw the kitchen sink, uh, particularly at Tony Abbott, over the next few days uh, before the electronic media blackout. That is how they are intending to win government, not by offering hope, not by explaining and defending their record of the last few years but trying a smear and fear campaign yes there was some commentary by some uh, uh, advertising executives and uh, by one other person but uh, i think one of them one of them was is that one of them was one of your front benches though apparently that's mm -hmm. pretty serious isn't it if a if a coalition front bencher is criticizing the federal director for not doing a good enough job on the ag campaign well, what I can say is that our campaign is uh, run by Tony Abbott. Tony Abbott runs his own race. He's a man who is, control, is in control of uh, his destiny and this campaign, unlike, as we heard last week, out of the, the mouth of, of a Labor legend, out of Mr Dolabosca's mouth, the Labor Party campaign is run, as he said, by the despised cast of robotic, ruthless robotic machine men. They're the ones who are controlling Julia Gillard, they're the ones who've decided to run a negative campaign. Tony Abbott is running our campaign and that makes him um, far more appropriate to lead this nation. If Julia Gillard can't even run her own election campaign, how can she run the country? Tony Abbott has the authority and the ability to run his own race. He's making it positive and that's yet another one of many reasons why he is far more appropriate to be our Prime Minister and that's what the Australian people deserve, not some puppet controlled by the faceless men and people uh, like Carl Batar, but someone who knows where he wants to take this country and give them the Prime Minister and the government that they deserve. Can, sorry, can I, can I just understand, what, what's the distinction there that you're making between Carl Batar as the National Secretary running the advertising campaign and, and the campaign strategy for the Labor Party? Party. Are you saying that Tony Abbott does that for the Liberal Party rather than Brian Lochnane? No, no, what I'm saying is that the Labor Party has a very different way of running their campaigns. They are very desperate at the moment. They will say and do anything to win. Just as they did at the last election, they said and did anything they thought would get them elected. They made all these promises. They haven't been able to live up to them. They haven't been able to, to deliver computers in schools. They haven't been able to deliver on the childcare centres they promised. They haven't been able to, uh, to deliver on a whole range of policies. Therefore, they need to go on the negative. And this is uh, the, the nasty, typical union-type campaign that we're used to. Carl Batar approached a, a union last week, the Communications Electrical and Plumbing Union, asking them to break their own rules to give the Labor Party a $500,000 donation. Now, we don't run our campaigns like that. We don't break our, our own rules. We don't try and arm wrestle people to get extra funding from them because we're desperate and we want more money to run a negative campaign. That's what I meant mm. when I uh, invoked Carl Batar's involvement. And he's the one who has more say in this campaign than uh, Julia Gillard, whereas Tony Abbott would have a clear direction and a clear say in our positive message and what uh, hope we're offering the Australian people. I hear what you're saying about, uh, about mm. Labor's negative campaigns designed to frighten people into not voting for Tony Abbott, but if today's opinion polls are to be believed, whether it's the AC Nelson two-party result that has you trailing 53-47 or the front page of The Weekend Australian, which shows that on marginal seats you're likely to pick up some in New South Wales and Queensland, uh, but perhaps suffer in, in your home state of Victoria, uh, is it a case of it's frustrating? Uh, but at the end of the day, it looks like these Labor attack ads seem to be working, if the polls are to be believed. 
What we've seen in this election campaign more than any other that I can remember is that there's a high degree of volatility. There's a high degree of volatility in, um, in people's opinions, in the polls. There's so much uncertainty and anxiety out there. People are feeling um, very anxious about their jobs, about the current state of the economy, and that really is spilling into the uh, political arena. They've seen a first-term Prime Minister assassinated within two and a half years. They don't know uh, for sure who's going to be Prime Minister if the Labor Party wins at the next election. They've seen a former um, Prime Ministerial aspirant in Mark Latham, who, who Julia Gillard spruiked. Let's, let's not forget, the Labor Party said that this man should be Prime Minister. They've seen all of this happen and it is adding a great deal of anxiety and confusion and their disappointment with what the federal government has not been able to deliver. Their frustration that the rise of the cost of living has gone up. Their, their frustration that um, the electricity prices will, will keep on rising. Their frustration that the boats are still coming. All these go to create great uncertainty and volatility and we all know there's only really one poll that counts and I'm sure there'll be much movement over the next week but the real poll that counts is the one next Saturday. Well I'm sure something uh, where there might be some common ground in this campaign even if Labor won't admit it uh, is what you said about uh, Labor perhaps regretting having backed Mark Latham into the Prime Ministership in 2004 um, but I wanted to, you, you mentioned previous Labor leaders, uh, I wanted to draw your attention to something that, that one of your previous leaders said during the week at a journalism conference, Malcolm Turnbull uh, was talking about Kerry O'Brien uh, and his uh, interviewing style and he said this, quote, O'Brien often reads, a, pardon me doing the same by the way, quote, O'Brien often reads a long mini, mini editorial to his victims and then seeks a response. This is very poor technique if the objective is to elicit information from the interviewee. If, on the other hand, the object is for the interviewer to show off and spar with the interviewee, it works well. Uh, would, you, would you agree with that criticism of Kerry O'Brien? Uh, I think um, that uh, a very valid analysis of um, Kerry's style, and we've, we've seen it on display. I don't think that um, journalists, who are an important part of the political process, are beyond analysis and, dare I say it, um, criticism. And I think what people are more concerned about is not journalists and politicians talking about each other, but perhaps talking about what uh, ideas and what solutions they have for the um, issues and concerns that the Australian people have. No, fair, very fair point. I won't do a follow-up question on that. Let's move on to some of that. Um, one of your areas of responsibility is innovation. Now, uh, this is a little bit of a long bow, but innovation is a pretty important element of communications policy, and, and we saw the debate during the week between the government's national broadband network versus the alternative policy that Tony Smith, your shadow communications minister, put forward during the week, a, a much more modest in price, um, but perhaps also modest in, out, in, in terms of abilities and, and capabilities on the internet. Does it concern you, having responsibility for innovation, uh, that your leader, Tony Abbott, doesn't seem particularly interested in, in those kind of issues? Oh, I think now you're drawing a, lo a long bow. <laughs> I innovation, innovation is many things, including an attitude um, towards um, the workplace, towards production, towards more efficient processes. And um, we are and have always supported um, innovation, just as uh, I don't expect uh, my counterpart Kim Carr to be able to pull a apart a car engine and put it back together again just because he's industry minister. Uh, uh, I don't expect um, other key players in this campaign, whether they be leaders or, uh, or otherwise, to be tech heads about it. Wow. The important thing about the broadband policy is that people have to decide who they can believe in who they can believe can deliver an affordable infrastructure for our future broadband needs. The Labor Party made promises at the last election that they weren't able to keep on broadband. How can people possibly believe them that a, a program developed on the back of an envelope effectively on flights um, between Canberra and other capital cities 
is actually a, a well thought out plan. There's no cost benefit analysis. They went ahead with an 800 word statement and released it. It has not been properly costed. Uh, experts estimate that it's going to blow out to the tune of 50 or 100 percent. We've seen in, in Tasmania the take up has been appalling because it, it's too expensive and the cost runs in thousands per connection of households. So I think the real spotlight needs to be on the outlandish, unprofessional, back of the envelope policy, policy on the run by the Labor Party. Our policy is responsible and it is affordable and it takes into account the diversity of Australia's geography and population spread and will use a mix of technologies to maximise our broadband connection. I, look, I accept that, uh, that your policy is certainly a lot cheaper than the Labor Party's policy and it may be uh, more realistic as well. We, we don't know yet uh, how, how much the uptake will be of Labor's national broadband network, but I, I would have liked Tony Abbott to know a little something about it. Uh, I, I hear what you're saying about the idea of, you know, you don't expect an industry minister to be able to assemble or disassemble a car. I'm not asking Tony Abbott to be able to lay out the fibre optic cable, but I would like him to at least be able to describe what's going on. And he seemed really deficient on that front when he was interviewed by Kerry O'Brien. Mm. Well, Julie Gillard wasn't able to provide details herself, so I think we should provide equal standards um, to leaders of both political parties. And... Um, and I think people are not looking for uh, a Prime Minister who uh, understand, uh, can explain the intricacies of a particular technology. They want a Prime Minister who understands the need for the technology, has the ability and the fiscal restraint to be able to deliver that in an affordable way, uh, to make it accessible to them, um, whether they're a household or a business. That's what they're interested in. They're interested in delivery. They're interested in in real action, real policies, not virtual policies like the Labor Party. And we've seen them that they'll pluck out all sorts of policies out of the air. They, they'll, they won't cost them. This is next week. And yet they're asking the Australian people to trust them with, with another term. It, it, it's an absolute disgrace that they can get away with, uh, with this sort of behaviour and with a lack of accountability. That is what is concerning people. They want an accountable accountable uh, political parties to provide policies that are responsible that will deliver for future needs in an affordable way. We've seen in Tasmania, I think it was a 70 or thereabouts households, that's the uptake of um, the broadband in Tasmania because it's too expensive and it will blow out. If this government can't give away free computers, if this government can't put free fluff in people's roofs, how the hell are they going to be able to deliver a broadband policy on the budget they've set? It will blow out. It will blow out by 50 to 100 per cent, as expert analysts have said. No, fair point, uh, Ms Mirabella. We are almost out of time. Maybe you should have been selling the, uh, the Coalition's alternative on the National Broadband Network. Uh, I appreciate your time this morning on Saturday. Jenna, thanks for joining us. Pleasure. You're watching Saturday Agenda. In a moment, we'll be back with the panel.